Hello YouTube again. Hello Mr. Diggs. Hello Mr. Dylan. Dylan's eating his Twizzlers. Today we are talking about nitrates and ammonia and cycling a tank. So when you start a new saltwater tank, uh, one of the most primary things you start with is rock. You need rock in the tank um, because it's part of the filtration. It's your biological filter. So you can't really keep a reef tank without the rock. And I'm going to try and explain why in this video and how to cycle a tank and how to get it going from day one when you first add the rock to when you're allowed to safely add corals and fish to get something up and running like this this tank over here. It's coming up on about eight months old. So the way we used to keep reef tanks, you would start with live rock. We don't do that anymore. We almost always recommend going with this, dry rock. This is some flat stuff from two little fishies called stacks. Really easy to work with. This is some other marker rock. So basically it's 100% dry. There's nothing live on it. It's just a dry piece of rock. And the cycle that you're waiting this three, four weeks is basically you're trying to get this dry rock to turn into live rock. What does that mean when I say live rock? Basically the rock is completely covered in bacteria that we can't see with our eyes, but it's there. And it's this denitrifying bacteria. And what it does, how it filters the water, basically your nice fish that you have. Thanks man. Um, the nice fish in the tank are creating waste. So you feed them, they pee, they poo, and what's coming out of them is ammonia. Um, uneaten fish food will also turn to ammonia and dying or decaying matter in the tank. Everything that's sort of waste in the tank comes out as this ammonia, which is very poisonous and harmful to fish, corals, shrimp, invertebrates, all the nice things you want to keep, ammonia is going to kill it. And so when you have a new tank, you don't have any way of processing the ammonia. So what we're trying to do is get this rock here to get covered in bacteria, this denitrifying bacteria. And what that does, it basically... Um, the way I sort of think of it is it consumes the ammonia and it's going to turn it into nitrite and eventually nitrate. So you go from very poisonous, not good, less poisonous, not so bad in low amounts. When nitrate gets high, it can also be poisonous, but in normal amounts, it's actually good for the tank. You need some nitrates and your corals will, will actually, certain corals, soft corals like zoanthids and xenia and stuff like that will actually appreciate some nitrate. So that's what we mean when we talk about cycling a new aquarium. It's basically getting the rock to the point where you can process ammonia, very poisonous, to nitrate. And that's by having bacteria on the rock. So you fill the tank up, you got salt water in it, you got your new dry rock that starts bleach white. How do we get the bacteria on the rock? So these clever companies here have come out with some products. So I would say these are probably the most popular ones. These are the ones that we carry. This might be the most well-known one. It's the Dr. Tim's one and only. And you have Microbacter 7. This is by Brightwell. And this one's a little bit newer, but a uh, personal favorite of mine, BioS from Aquaforce. Essentially, they're all the same thing. It's denitrifying bacteria, that bacteria you want on the rock. These guys have gone and cultivated it and thrown it in a bottle for you. So you can just add that to the tank as per the instructions. And that's gonna get your dry rock that starts with no bacteria into live rock so that you can safely add stuff to the tank and process the ammonia. So you got the rock in there, you've added the denitrifying bacteria. The last step um, that you need is some source of ammonia. So there's no ammonia yet present in the tank. So if you've read online or watched some other videos, one of the ways of doing it is um, what they call ghost feeding. Or you may have read about using a dead shrimp. So basically you need some source of ammonia in order to get the cycle going to start feeding that bacteria. So I think the most common way to do it is called ghost feeding. So you basically just go and get any sort of fish food, pick whichever one, it doesn't really matter. And you're gonna start feeding your new saltwater tank this ghost fish that doesn't exist because you're just trying to get the food to break down into ammonia to help get the cycle going. Um, the other way to do it is you can get a little piece of live rock. So sometimes we have like little pieces lying around here in the beds that we'll just give people when they start a new tank. And that will help to colonize the new rock. So you take your little piece of existing live rock and you throw it in the tank and the bacteria that's on that rock will take over 
the dry rock and help to colonize it. Um, existing salt water can also help. So if someone's setting up a tank and they live close to the store, we'll give them often, you know, five gallons of our own water to just help sort of turbocharge their cycle to get it going. So those little steps can kind of help the cycle along. There's some products out there that will claim to cycle a tank in 24 hours or 48 hours. Um, I think stability might be one of them. But m Dr. Tim, oh, okay, Dylan, thank you. Dr. Tim's is one of them. That they do claim that the tank is um, safe for fish in a really unbelievably short amount of time. And in my experience, you know, maybe it works for you, maybe you've done it, I'm not sure. But um, this hobby definitely rewards patience. And the fish are not cheap and they're living animals. So if you're patient and you just follow the steps, you're going to have the denitrifying bacteria and you'll, you'll be able to safely add these guys in there. And the way you know that the tank is cycled when it's done is you're going to need some test kits. If you live close to the store, you can come by and we're happy to test your water for you. But basically in the beginning, you're going to have a spike or a surge of ammonia and then it's going to go to zero. And then you're going to have a surge of nitrite and that'll go to zero. And then in the final stages of the cycle, you'll have um, uh, nitrate. So that's basically your nitrogen cycle happening there. So a lot of this and then none of this, and then the exact same thing for nitrate. And then you should have no nitrite, no ammonia, so none of the poisonous, harmful components, and just nitrate. And once you have nitrate in the tank, that's basically signaling to you, we can't see the bacteria with our eyes, right? But if you have nitrate, you know that something in the tank is consuming the ammonia and turning it into nitrate. And what that happens to be is the bacteria that's on the rock. And that process to colonize the rock and for that to happen is generally four weeks. And it sucks because you want a nice thriving looking reef tank and you've gone out and probably spent a considerable amount of money. And it's a strange hobby in that aspect. You know, other hobbies, maybe you're into cars or snakes or whatever, you go out and buy the car you can drive the thing off the lot same day. Or if you go buy a cute bulldog, what up Diggs? You can enjoy that pet or that hobby or whatever you're into the same day. Uh, this hobby is a little bit different. You spend all this money and then you literally sit and wait and bite your nails and uh, it's excruciating. But if you can be patient, like I said, the hobby definitely rewards patience. Um, good things in this hobby happen very slow and bad things unfortunately happen very fast. So that's the nitrogen cycle. I hope I explained it clearly. If there's any other questions about cycling a tank, setting up a reef tank, um, any questions related to saltwater tanks in general, I could literally talk about this stuff all day. Hit us up in the comments below, email us or fragbox.ca. Thanks for watching.